Chenmul Yashkash Maya Museum showcases the Maya culture and highlights the castoir. The museum was the brainchild of Petrona Carrillo Nekokom, who died last year. Her family is keeping her vision of a house of culture that showcases the history of the Mayas alive. Orbelize watch team travel to San Lazaro Village in the Orange Rock District to find out more. We will have part one of our tour following these words from our partners, Shell Belize. BNE Charitable Trust, the Barry, and the National Gas Company. <music> The National Gas Company Belize Limited project became a reality because Belizeans believed in the project and invested in its development, construction, and implementation. Equity financing for the project featured investments from local enterprises as well as one foreign investor. The public-private partnership structure of the project facilitated government's ownership of a 25% stake at no cost to the taxpayers. Debt financing for the project featured the successful launch of Belize's first ever project bonds, some $30 million financed by a cross-section of institutional investors. Investments came from credit unions, notably St. Francis Xavier Credit Union and Holy Redeemer Credit Union, insurance companies, pension funds, and commercial banks. In addition, the project managed to successfully secure some $12 million in debt financing from the IDB Invest. The IDB's participation in this debt financing is a testament to their belief in the environmental, social, and governance principles taken on by the developers of this project. This project is a testament to the growth and development of Belize's financial system. It shows confidence of Belizean investors to put their money behind homegrown and developed projects that contribute to our national development. I am proud of this project and I'm hopeful that there are many more like it to come. The National Gas Company of Belize, fueling Belize forward. We are the Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, Orndrag, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. The Barry. Get more? Feelings. Since 2008, the Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust has created opportunities for Belizeans to develop themselves and their communities. The Trust employs tools that are intuitive, collaborative, and accessible so that every Belizean is empowered to achieve their full potential. Over 200,000 Belizeans have been impacted because of our various initiatives. The Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, empowering Belizeans of today to create the Belize of tomorrow. Shell V Power with three times more cleaning and friction reducing molecules. Go well, go Shell. And we are the home of Hugo Rene Carrillo. And Hugo Rene, what is that name? Some familiar Rene. I know a guy by the name of Rene. I don't know if you've met him before. Somos Tokayos. We are Tokayos. <laughs> you are Rene, I'm Rene. <laughs> yes. You know, there was also a famous singing duo way back when that, that sang songs together Rene and Rene. Rene and Rene, and then you have the famous Hugo, Hugo Chavez, Hugo, Chavez. Hugo Sanchez, Hugo Blanco. Hugo Blanco, yes. Okay. 
cool. Uh, and we have uh, other artists of the Bellissim of Hugo also. Hugo the DJ that I know. Yes, <laughs> and Rene, he comes with the, it's a powerful name because it reburns. Yes. That's the meaning of Rene, yeah. to reburn. To be reborn. Yes. Okay, so we are both reborn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you for welcoming me here at your home. And I notice you have, um, here you have your father. I met your, met your father yes. and um, your cousin. cousin. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, you, want me to, you want to introduce them to me? Sure. Um, good afternoon and welcome to Uchanmul Yashkash Maya Museum at the San Lazaro Village in Orange Walk District. Here with me is the Patriarch, Mr. Pedro Carrillo. And he is 81 years old. A young man yet, man. Well, I can see the home. How you feel? Me siento joven, pero de la mente, porque ya casi está cayendo. He says he's young in mind, but uh, he, he keeps his mind thinking young. Yes. He is um, very passionate when it comes to culture. Mm -hmm. And he has been inculcating that we need to preserve our culture, we need to rescue especially the language and our traditions. So here we have Adriel, Adriel. he's my young cousin, and he comes aboard as the assistant to the director, which I am the director, and he is a young, talented artist, okay. and he showcases his art and culture. Mm -hmm. So it's when art meets culture. So we will see, we will meet Mr. Pedro giving us some stories about how San Lazaro was founded uh -huh. and Adriel will be relating to us about his artwork and what we call the Shokin, the Cabanuelas, which is the um, a traditional way of um, the, the planting in, in the Mayan traditional way. Yeah. So we have a, a series of things to share with you guys and feel free to ask any questions and I know that it's a, it's a long road, but we are getting there slowly. And I think that our Belizean people, they deserve a better future. And a better future comes as people, as Mr. Pedro Carrillo and Adiel, conserving and preserving s for future generations. I always say that you have to know your past so you can appreciate your present. You know, know your past so you can appreciate your present and plan your future. All right? So you have it right here. We have it right here. Yeah. But, but tell me about your, tell me about yourself, Hugo um, Rene. I was born here in San Lazaro. Uh, my dad is Pedro Carrillo. I mom, my mom, she passed away last uh, year, month in, in me. And she's the matriarch and she was the, he had this vision of having a house of culture. Mm -hmm. And especially to rescue the history how these communities came about. Um, myself, I did a degree in economics and public administration, but throughout the years, I, every day I heard my parents speaking about the caste war, <laughs> the Maya social war. And one day I decided that it's my duty to take them from ground zero mm -hmm. where this war erupted. And I felt that we need this because this museum serves as a catalyst, it serves as a bridge to link our heritage, our culture, our history. We're just a few miles across the Rio Hondo. Yes. So um, at the moment, I am embarking in a huge project is compiling how these communities came about. And I, I feel honored and humbled that Ground Zero Teosuko invites me to deliver conferences about the impact of the Castle War once this um, Belize, which was a former British colony. No, 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 the Castle War is a very important part of our history that we don't necessarily teach again, you know, but the entire northern Belize and parts of central, like in the Cayo, all the way up in the Cayo district, 
um, Ben Kibrio, et cetera, et cetera, uh, uh, San Pedro, all, all these are people that are connected with the caste war, right? In some way, fashion or form. Yes, and this is one thing that we have seen that there is hunger. Mm. There is a need to teach our children, to teach the younger generation, for example, Many of them, they don't know because as a consequence of the caste war, we, there is a border, yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Many of them, they only know who their grandfather is, but they don't know where their great grandfather came, came from. from yeah. uh, they don't know that there was a, a, there was a commercial of weapons, ammunition with the Mexican government, with the Mayas. Yeah. So, so th they don't, they don't, there is a lot of things, but the most Im important, I think, it's identity. Identity, yeah. Identity. And here, Adriel, Adriel relates, like I said, when art meets culture. And this is one of the things that, that he elaborates here. And at the moment, we are working with some young artisans and for future plans that we are going to do an exhibit about our culture art under the direction of Adriel Carrillo. Okay, Adriel, let's hear from you. Nice meeting you, by the way. Nice meeting you as well. Right. Um, well, I am Adriel Carrillo. Uh, I am assistant to the director here at the Uchan Mulyash Cash Maya Museum. As well, as the director was saying, uh, my role here is um, the, apart from an artist in culture, I as well give the tour. I am the site um, guide for the for the museum, and um, through my through my um, art, I express all what I feel about my culture, um, what I imagine, what I want to revive through my culture. So for example, um, one of my art that I do is wood burning, um, fabric painting, um, sculptures with clay and cement, and there are more that I want to um, elaborate more on. What influenced you to become um, so culturally inclined? Well, what uh, fascinates me is um, knowing my past, my history. So, and um, that um, in give me the interest to 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 start to investigate and know my history more. And I started to have a passion in getting to know my people, and not only our people, but the whole um, culture of Belize different cultures that we have and um, I think I I love my culture and that's why um, I came up in partner with the director and both of us we work and we host um, people and we plan everything that so that when people come we have something for them and we we can host them the way they they um, supposed to be yep. and, and and your dad um, here Mr. Pedro Carrillo is the third generation of the founder of this community. Mm -hmm. His grandfather was Fernando Carrillo. Mm -hmm. His father was Santos Carrillo. Mm -hmm. And he is Pedro Carrillo. Mm -hmm. And he will give you the welcome in Yucatec Maya. Don Pedro. Sí, señor. ¿Cómo está usted? Pues bueno. Es un placer estar aquí con usted el día de hoy. Muchas gracias. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Don Pedro. Right. Muchas gracias, Mr. René. And uh, son, you'll welcome me in, um, in Yucatec Maya. Mucho gusto. Eh, sí, ese, ese, ese es español. En, en Yucatec, ¿cómo se dice? Bienvenido. Se ve la bienvenida. Tené que estar bienvenida. To like it, amigo, belly, señor. Tak. Punta gorda. Tak. Corozal. To like it, amigo, belly, señor. Welcome, my Belizean friend from Punta gorda to Corozal. That's Corozal. What said, right? uh -huh. I say, welcome to my all my friends from PG to Corozal. Mm -hmm. Belizean. Then I can take to like it, amigo, belly, señor. Yet, mi amigas, belly, señor. Tak Corozal, mm -hmm. Tak Telo, Cucucu, Le, le Radio Belisenio. Okay. 
Now, I noticed um, you, you said well, you welcomed me up from Belizean region. I picked up on that, but what else you said before that? Sí, yo le doy la bienvenida a todo beliceño mm. del sur al norte. Sí. Todo beliceño. Incluso mis amigos y mis amigas. Todos. Incluso beliceños. Okay. Todos los de la radio también. Todos de la radio. Ajá. Les quiero. Bye bye. Ajá. Ya te va. Me, se no, despide. le estoy saludando que estoy con mi amigo. Ah, ok. Sí, estamos. Ahora me vas a llevar al museo, ¿verdad? Igualmente. ¿Vas con nosotros al museo? Vamos ahorita ahí. Hay de todo. ¿Hay de todo? De todo. ¿Y usted, usted sabe todo lo que hay ahí? ¿Conoce todo lo que hay? Es que ya está lleno las. Las tripas, como dice el mexicano. Ah, es que ya comimos, ¿verdad? Sí, pero, pero siempre vamos, vamos a ir a, a ver el museo. Ok. Aquí, Adriel and my dad will. It don't matter what part of the jewel you come from. You that you and me that me. But guess what? Um, here we're entering at the Maya Museum, Uchanul Yashkash, meaning that it means the little mound in the green forest. Uchanul Yashkash. It's a Maya name. Yeah. And in front of me, there's a little mound. And I about when I came in, I kept admiring that little mound and wondering what, what it was all about. This mound here where we're standing is evidence that the Mayas lived. Mm -hmm. And I will show you the different proof mm -hmm. when we go inside of the museum. Okay. So the little mound in the green forest, this, all this that you see here, it composed of flowers. It has a botanical garden, medicinal garden, and all this was planted by our matriarch. Yeah. And here is where we are planting more for future generations so so we can go ahead okay thank you so much for having me here and vamos a avanzar un poco verdad señor igualmente ajá avanzamos de todo ajá usted eh, tuvo bastante que ver con esto verdad mucho mm -hmm. okay Adriel will briefly explain to you this is one of his art, but he will okay. briefly explain to you what he what he did, no? Okay, Adriel, so this is your work here. Yeah? Um explain it for Uh yes, so what we have here at the front is um the Yumkash, he is a Mayan god uh, in the Mayan um culture. He is said to be um, god of the corn. Mm -hmm. Now, um, as well, he is a god under the um, wild vegetation. Um, back in the past, Mayas used to give him or offer prayers to him for guidance under the forest. Mm -hmm. For example, um, they would want to go hunt. They would give them, give him prayers for protection because maybe who knows he. Um, they used to go hunting and they never all or you you don't know maybe um you will not go back home or just for protection under the the, the forest okay. yeah and um as well as he's a god for wild vegetation um there are many trees that um have medicinal uses um in the forest so what the what you you guys are seeing here are basically um medicinal uses that we have all around here um for example i want to show you this what i have here is called the oja santa this is holy leaf yeah the holy leaf um this has medicinal uses as well what is that used for holy leaf uh, it is said that um it it's for snake bites okay and as well it it is good for um to treat symptoms of um, maybe um cough um uh, fever as well mm -hmm. yes so you grind up the holy leaf like like, like, like you're doing over mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yes, I'm here to grind up holy leaf. And how do I apply the how do I apply the holy leaf? Yes, and then you will just place it on your face. Uh, a bite, you just place it there. Yeah. So, like, probably him try just bite me just on my hand and neck. I could have just blow. Yeah, you can use that. And but, <laughs> like I said, here there are many different um, medicinal plants, uh -huh. and each one of them have their purpose. Some of them can use it for the, for the same um, uh, medicine. And but one thing is important for us is that we need to preserve nature. Mm -hmm. And by preserving nature, I think that the Mayas, they were more than intelligent. They were way ahead mm -hmm. because you had to ask permission before entering the forest. Mm -hmm. You must ask permission before cutting anything. Mm -hmm. And my dad, he can recall when they used to, went, they used to go hunting. They used to ask permission and if they're going to plant their first harvest, they used to do an offering. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've, I've been to ceremonies with, with the for first offering indeed, and that's a very important, important ceremony. Dígale qué hacían con la primicia. Ajá, como cuéntame, cuéntame esa experiencia. En español o en, en la en idioma. Español, la primicia lo hacíamos tiempo de que vas a cortar palo para tu casa. Guano para tu casa, siembra de tu maíz, arroz, frijol, de todo. Tienes que pedir permiso al dueño del monte para que te escuche y para que sepas qué estás, estás haciendo. Lo bueno es para todos, no para él, para todos. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, folks that we hear noise in the background, we are close to a busy highway, but yet this is like an oasis. Aside from that busy highway, because we are not really seeing the highway much, but we're hearing the effects of the vehicles passing on, on the highway. Now, um, Yum Kash, I notice um, Yum Kash has um, a plant in his hand, right? Yes, um, the Yum Kash, what it's depicting there, uh, as I said, is God of also God of the corn. Why? Because at, at the hand, you can see that it has um, corn. So that is why it is said that he's um, God of the corn. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's a corn. Yeah. It's corn has it. Okay. Yum cash. It's yum cash. Cash means forest. Hmm? Cash means forest. Forest. Sorry. Yes. Forest. forest. Yeah. And, um, just one thing that we like to, to, to emphasize that the Mayas, they have their deities, they are, they are gods. Yeah. But then, in this technological and informative world, people will just go and, you know, I'm going to Google it, research about it, never knowing that there is a rich culture behind it. If you meet Mr. Pedro Carrillo, 81 years old, and he walks you to the milpa or the forest, and tells you about the different practices, about the Ishtabai, about the Alush, is far, far, and you are learning also, and not just be sitting on a tablet. I like myself, Pedro, for that to me, for me one day, Ishtabai, and uh, especially Ishtabai, you know, and, and, and the, I would like para, to know more. Para contarte, uh -huh. yo me siento allá, pasan, pasan niños, vengan acá. Don Pedro quiere darles una historia. He calls the children and said, Don Pedro wants to give you a story. Uh -huh. ¿A qué hora sale el sol? What time does the sun come out? A las seis. No, hijo. El sol sale cualquier rato. The el sun sol. comes out all the time. Anytime. Sí, porque cuando está nublado, el sol se va. No es que se va, se tapa con las nubes. Claro. Ahora, cuando viene el sol, ya son como las diez, las once de la mañana. Mm -hmm. Por eso no tiene hora para salir el sol. Y me dice, Don Pedro, ¿dónde aprendió ese? En el lenguaje maya. Mm -hmm. So the sun shines at all times, right? It doesn't have any special time. Exactly. It's either night or it's either the clouds or something that's keeping it from shining, but it's there all the time. Yo invité a un niño, es primo mío. Le digo, ven hoy aquí en mi casa. ¿Qué voy a hacer? 
le digo, te voy a presentar un amigo muy valioso para mí. He invites a friend and says he'll present another friend, very valuable friend. Y me dice, ¿cómo se llama? What's the name? No tiene nombre. Cuando llegas te vamos a decir cómo se llama. There's no name. When you, come, when you arrive, you'll know the name. And he come, he, he, he king is? Es un... Bueno, yo le digo primo Juan Carrillo. Okay. Es nieto de él. Oh, he's talking about the little... Uh, it's, a, it's a small kid. He's a, like fourth cousin to us. Okay, so... He, and what, what he's getting across that we have... In this community, we have a small kindergarten. We have a Methodist um, primary school, and uh, Roman Catholic school, and uh, Belize High School for Agriculture in this community. In the same San Lazaro community. Same San Lazaro. And um, approximately like six different churches. Okay. So what this makes, a community with so much institutions of socializing, and now with a museum, this is a foundation of teaching our generations. So what he does, he invites them, teach them few words, mm -hmm. keywords mm -hmm. in the Yucatec Maya. Okay. And anytime they're going to school, there goes greeting him in Maya. Okay. Next day, another word. Uh -huh. So. This is his vision that our generations need to be taught. It doesn't matter which language, but your mother language, you cannot forget it and you should not be ashamed of it. Of course. And this is what he is doing mm -hmm. with this generation. Very good. Very good, Don Pedro. Quiero, quiero levantar mi pueblo. He que sea, raise his people. Que no seamos mezquino so o no be mean. O vergonzoso or para tener nuestro idioma. That of our language. Yo no estoy, tengo vergüenza de ser mi idioma. I am not of speaking my language. El criollo, español y, creole, y mi idioma maya. And Spanish, maya. I am, talk to me in a creole, no? Talk to me in creole. Talk to me in a creole. Que le hable en criollo. Oh. What do you want to tell me? Let's go, let's go rest. You want to rest now? Yes, I'm tired. You tired? <laughs> you tired? <laughs> we tired of, we tired of... Tired of walking. You tired of walk? Right here. Yeah, you walk, you walk too much, Anna, huh? Yes. Yeah. I wake up five five o'clock in this morning. Uh-huh. Five o'clock this morning? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're listening to five o'clock this morning. Come on, sit down and see my friends to come and tell me. Bishabel, malo ben. Tushka bin. Weste, 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 Quieren aprender Maya. Oh, so they tell you they want to learn Maya. Uh -huh. Y yo les digo en Maya. Y me, pre me preguntan, Don Pedro, tú no tienes, no tienes, no tienes vergüenza para hablar tu, tu idioma. So they, I'm Don Pedro, you're not ashamed for talking your language. No. Yo, yo me voy en México, me voy en Estados Unidos. Yeah, Mexico, well, that's, that's yo that's hablo that's la Maya con mi gente. I talk Maya with my people. Okay. ¿Dónde ha sido el muchachito? Acá en Tecash, Uskuskab, allá es pura maya. Mm -hmm. Primo, cuando tú vayas allá, no tengo dinero, me vas a llevar, te voy a llevar, hijo. Mm -hmm. Te voy a llevar para que aprendas la maya como yo lo aprendí. Qué bien. Ok. He's proud of his language and he's taking the little kids, to, teaching the little kids to learn the, the language as he learned it. Now we go to the museum, sir. This is the uh, a short, the, the entrance, the mm -hmm. trail. Mm -hmm. And like I, uh, the trail has, like I um, mentioned at the entrance, that we have at least more than a hundred different types of uh, medicinal gardens, ornamental mm -hmm. flowers. And for example, we have a guava tree and that guava tree, we use it to, to do our tea, which is very healthy. Okay. Um, we have um, orange, we have a lime, we use the leaves also to do um, natural juices um, and also tea, and especially to this um, pandemic. Um, here we give, um, we greet the little Alucito. Alucito? Yes. What, what, what would Alucito mean? What the, would he symbolize? Alush, we have to be very careful when we speak about the Alush, because we have the Alush, like many people say, you know what, it's a little, looks like a little man or something like that. Mm -hmm. But then 
this is something that has been coming since our ancestors about the story of the Alush. We have the Alush that takes care of the, of the Milpa. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Alush that the Maya priests, the men, create out of clay. Mm -hmm. And we have a specific one to show you inside of the museum. Okay, so do we have to we have to touch the Alush before we go in, do we? Um, or we should? I think that this guy is taking care of us at the moment. So we don't we don't greet him, don't touch yeah, him you can, or something? You can you can tell him because up to right now he has about three stones left. Uh -huh. My name is Chivas Person. Stone them, stone right? them yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's our focus. Uh, right. So I think it's, it's like, well, okay, hi. Okay, so Adriel, we are um, around in your botanical garden here. Let, what, what will you tell me about that? Yes, so um, welcome to the botanical garden here at the museum. Uh, this is the botanical garden that is dedicated to the Mayan goddess known as Ishel. Ishel. Yes, she is a Mayan goddess of medicine, fertility, and textile. Mm -hmm. So um, there are two types of her depicting um, one is that depicts her as um, a younger version of her and another one um, which is older um, the younger one it's um, basically the depict her as um, showing her with a moon or sometimes with a rabbit now the the older one is um with with um how you say that um, with a vis, with a vis, um, and um, information says that the older um, Ishel is watering the plants on Earth, mm -hmm. but in reality, it means like she is giving birth, birth, right? So it's when the when the for the for the woman, um, when the baby comes out, it bursts the the little bag sack, mm -hmm. it bursts, and that what it means the 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 Ishel. And as well, she is goddess to a few um, animals, for example, the snake or rabbit. Uh, that's why she has a snake. And you will see a, a picture inside of the bot botanical garden. And the botanical garden has over 100 um, type of, of plants that has uses. We have from the shkanan to the guava to, to the um, chaya leaves. That okay. we have here. All of this is just set in here. Yeah, yeah, we have all of these plants set in here. So that is why we have the botanical garden here. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's move on. Where we go to now? Um, As Adriel has mentioned, this is the botanical medicinal garden, and we have different types of um, plants. And thanks to, to my parents, thanks to the elders, not only from this community, but surrounding villages, and I must mention one of them, in particular mm. is um, what we call her Chichi Nacha, is um, Ignacia um, Mogel. Okay. Um, she was one of the midwives and she had practiced the traditional medicine in the entire of these communities. Okay. And she was the one who used to deliver the babies oh, from them. She, so, so she, and here in the community, there's a small clinic in her honor as Ignacia Mogel Health Clinic. Okay. And all of these are war we have learned from our grandmothers, our great grandmothers here. And this culture that you see here is uh, more or less how Ishel is being represented as the, the, the elder woman. So this is the shell here. The shell here. This one here, the yeah. snake, this is the shell. And here, all of this you see is medicine. Okay. Medicine, for example, we have what we call the um, limonaria. Mm -hmm. If you have too thick. Too thick. Just take the, the yes, the fine leaves again. You will just mash it, make it like a little um, ointment, and you place it where um, you have your your um, the pain. This is a uh, kabachi. Again, people will have different. Uh, for example, rash, and we we'll go more to rash. You no, know, mm. like burns. This one is good, and you can drink it, and it gets dry. So we have that, and then we have Siempre Viva. Siempre Viva. Siempre Viva. A lot of people get um, bite by the doctor fly oh, or yeah, yeah. wasp and things like that. And you can really just 
uh, mash the leaves and it stays uh, cool and then you just put it on 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 where it hurts so all of these here um is for some medicinal purpose medicinal purposes and, and even have the tobacco oh uh, if that is used medicinally yes sometimes so people in go in the forest and they get by um a sting right uh -huh. and sometimes people end up with a worm mm -hmm. and then afterwards this you can just um warm it then you rub it and you mm -hmm. paste it next to three days that worm is dead okay. and here we have some small little ferns here is that for yourself? yes and then this is um it's okay um this one here is um many people say oh i have headache go go to this the pharmacy yes this is a little like i don't call it some prickle it is Sinanche. What does this do? We have the big tree there. I think that this tree, not there is not much around. This here, if you have a headache, if you, if you feel your, your head swollen, you just go and you pinch your head and you will clearly see that it's bursting. This one here, you very effective. Yes, yes, just bust it. You don't have a headache, but all that tension, all that pressure, all that burnout. But this is, you know, you know something. It feels like it's six in, right? Like, 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 like it goes, like, it, like it's going all the way in. Right. Doesn't you know? It doesn't. People that are are, are burnt out, burnt out and stress is different. When you are burnt out, you use this. Right here in the back, you know where you are. Cinco hindúes de este. He has cured five people using this. Tenían mucho dolor de cabeza. Had headaches and he cured the headaches. Lo llevaban con los doctores. Nada. No tiene nada. Tu papá le dice. No, está enfermo. Y me vinieron a buscar acá. Me dice Don Pedro, yo yo sé que usted puede curar estas cosas. ¿Qué quiere? Mi papá se está muriendo mucho dolor de cabeza y yo con su mamá de él me levanté y lo agarré. Llevé nueve de este. ¿Dónde está tu papá? Ahí está botado en el, en el piso y agarré. Comí, comí alcohol, le lavé su cabeza y se lo comencé a pinchar. Media hora, el hombre ya está brinca. Uh, half, hour, half hour afterwards, and the guy was up jumping around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good therapy. Yes, a good therapy. Yes. So it's something like acupuncture or yes. something like that. Exactly. Right? Okay. When we come back, we look at the mural that chronicles the journey of the Mayas during the caste war. And Hugo Carrillo shares how funding came about for the creation of the museum. We take a break to hear from our partners. The B&E Charitable Trust, working in the development of Belize, by inspiring young Belizean entrepreneurs to dream and to dream big. The National Gas Company, fueling Belize forward. The National Gas Company makes sure that you not only have a guaranteed supply of gas for every household need, but also that it is of the highest quality always. Shell Belize has been fueling Belize for many, many years, and they have done so reliably and with a lot of dependability. And the Bari stores in Belize City, Belmopan, San Ignacio, Orange Walk, and San Pedro, offering you much more for much less. The National Gas Company Belize Limited project became a reality because Belizeans believed in the project and invested in its development, construction, and implementation. Equity financing for the project featured investments from local enterprises as well as one foreign investor. The public-private partnership structure of the project facilitated government's ownership of a 25% stake at no cost to the taxpayers. Debt financing for the project featured the successful launch of Belize's first ever project bonds, some $30 million financed by a cross-section of institutional investors. Investments came from credit unions, notably St. Francis Xavier Credit Union and Holy Redeemer Credit Union, insurance companies, 
pension funds, and commercial banks. In addition, the project managed to successfully secure some $12 million in debt financing from the IDB Invest. The IDB's participation in this debt financing is a testament to their belief in the environmental, social, and governance principles taken on by the developers of this project. This project is a testament to the growth and development of Belize's financial system. It shows confidence of Belizean investors to put their money behind homegrown and developed projects that contribute to our national development. I am proud of this project and I'm hopeful that there are many more like it to come. The National Gas Company of Belize, fueling Belize forward. We are the Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, Orndrag, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. The Barry, get more, be less. Since 2008, the Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust has created opportunities for Belizeans to develop themselves and their communities. The Trust employs tools that are intuitive, collaborative, and accessible so that every Belizean is empowered to achieve their full potential. Over 200,000 Belizeans have been impacted because of our various initiatives. The Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, empowering Belizeans of today to create the Belize of tomorrow. Shell V Power, with three times more cleaning and friction reducing molecules. Go well, go Shell. A few years ago, we decided that we need to do a storyline of the history of our communities, you know, in Juak South. Mm -hmm. We know for a fact that the Mundomaya covers mm -hmm. southern Mexico, Belize, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala. The first painting was done by Adrel, and that is the smoking shell that you find in La Manai, on a Stella. Yes. And here we have the Saiba. What Saiba tree? The Saiba tree. A young Saiba tree. A young Saiba tree, the tree of life uh -huh. for the Mayas. Uh -huh. This one, um, there's a whole information about the Saiba tree, the importance in the Maya, the importance in the culture, folklore, different stories, uh -huh. just the Saiba tree. Um, then we have the smoking shell done by Adriel. And then the other one is, this is with the pre-Hispanic Maya. And then in 1847, the Maya social war erupts in mm -hmm. Southern Yucatan. And this is how the communities, not only in Arinjuac South, but also in Corozal and parts of Cayo, San Pedro came about. Yeah. So we have the, the, the Maya with the gun, but... Supplied by the, by the British colonial power. By the British, yes. yes. And then we have the machete. Machete was introduced as a, as a tool, yeah. but it was used as a weapon. Uh -huh. And then here from that, we say, somos hijos del maíz. Uh -huh. We are sons of the, of, corn. of the corn. And this is how the traditional Milpa comes. Each little tree represents a small community in Orange Rock okay. South. Now, we know for a fact that many casualties, many people died. Uh -huh. So this represents the death. But my father can be, and he can give you the testimony that many people had to cross the Rio Hondo yes. during that war. That's right. And I think that most of the churches here 
and in Corozal, they have their bells. Mm -hmm. A lot of these bells came from Icaiche. Yeah. A lot of them came from Yucatan. So that's what signifies we have the Rio Hondo, we have the lumber, we have the chicle, and now the keen season. Yeah. So this is a, a storyline of how the communities came about mm -hmm. in Orange Walk South. Yeah. Now Marcos Canul was Icaiche. Marcos Canul was Icaiche. And a few miles from here, Marcos Canul used to meet with his people yeah. before attacking Orange Walk in 1872. Yes. I think he, he felt betrayed by the then um, colonial authority and at the fort in Orange Walk, and then he decided to, to, to enlist the help of his fellow Ikaiche and um, attack the, um, the, the British fort in, in Orange Walk. Yes, I, story, right? Am I right? yes, yes, you are right. I, I have, I had the opportunity to meet this elder. He was 97 years old, and his grandfather was in that battle here in oh, Orange yeah. Walk. I had the opportunity to interview him, and he gave me more than what we know of what has been written. So that means our history needs to be written and needs to be investigated and needs to do a research and we need to lift up our people. Yeah. These are the unsung heroes mm -hmm. that we want to hear about. Mm -hmm. For example, my dad, um, he can relate to you how his grandfather came during that cast of war. ¿Le quiere decir? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo vino tu, 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 tu abuelo en, durante la guerra de castas? Mi abuelo, ellos vinieron cuando se levantó México, que se están muriendo, se están matando. Everyone was killing each other. Uh -huh. Entonces mi abuelo le dijo a, a su papá, que era mi abuelo también, uh -huh. vamos en la colonia. And he was, his father told him, his father, let's go over to the colony. Y mi abuelo, que es... Mi abuelo Fernando Carrillo empacó sus cosas. Solo metió un, un pantalón. He y una, on, una only one pants and one shirt. Y le dice a mi a, abuela, vamos. I told granny, let's go. Y se agarraron para venir. Todo allá. Y venían eh, puro en el monte. Venían. And they came through the bushes. Y cuando llegaron en, en el estado de Yucatán, Yucatán uh -huh. allá se dividieron. En Yucatán, they, they, they came across. Se, se regaron, pues okay, cada, cada quien buscó dónde puede venir a salvarse porque la gente venía de cortándole. Mm -hmm. If I'm, I'm right, the guerra de castas was the uprising that the Maya had against the Spanish and mestizo. So anything that was Spanish or mixed in the area had to die. And what they were was not welcome, right? And, and so it was a massive. Um, cleansing war, if you want to put it away, or, or cleansing, because they claim that um, that the cross, that the the Santa Cruz, um, spoke to them and told them to to do so. Um, right. uh, I think uh, my history, I got my history correct, right? Yes, yes. Um, the 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 Maya social war. Um, mm -hmm. It is one of the longest war, war war in the entire of America. And it continent. prevented Mex um, Chetumal, the Quintana Roo state, and um, and um, the, the other state next to it, Yucatan, Yucatan from becoming parts of Mexico, uh, the Federation of Mexico for quite some time because of the war that was going on and the uneasiness in the area. Yes, Yucatan right. was independent at that time. Yucatan was independent. Yes, but Merida is its capital. And then, and yeah. there, and there comes Campeche. Campeche. Campeche <laughs> played a vital uh -huh. role in this war. And just a few, three days ago. We attended a funeral, and my respect to Mr. Eleuterio Ku. Uh -huh. He passed away. He was in 1933 when he was born. Mm -hmm. And he came right here and he gave his testimony how Campeche played a significant role in this caste war. Yeah. So, and I call to all Belizeans we need to know our history. Yes. The, the colonial authority, what they did, as I was saying, and you correct me if I'm wrong, they supplied weapons to the Maya, but at the same time they gave refuge 
to those who were fleeing from the war. The war. So yeah. that's how that's how these areas are settled. So so on one hand they were giving refuge to, to those who were fleeing from the war, mm -hmm. and on the other hand they were supplying the Mayans with weapons. Is, is that right? Yes. Um, the 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 British itself, the colonialism, the rule that it played was for and against one because if the mayas wanted an independent nation how would the british allow for the mayas to be independent one there comes the trade the economic impact of the british there comes the social impact of uniting and dividing the cultures. Many people thought that it was only Ikaiche and the Krusob that they were fighting against each other. Yes, but many people should know that a lot of the Mayas that they were fighting, they had military experience because they were serving the Mexican government. And they were serving and they were killing their brothers and sisters. So, Mr. René, this is something that we, like I mentioned, when we used to sit around the table, my mom, my dad, they said, this is what your grandfather, your great grandfather told us. And I saw that it was my duty to take them to Ground Zero, to Yosuko, where this everything started. I took them to Tepich, mm -hmm. where this was the one of the biggest massacres of killing at least 20 non-white families. Well, definitely, Hugo Rene. Um, I enjoyed, and I always enjoy talking about the Guerra de Castas, because it is a war that has helped to shape the northern and um, western, extreme western parts of, of, of our, our country, you know, and, 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 and it played an important role in making us, in how we, who we are as a nation, in shaping even our borders um, with the treaty that was eventually signed with, with Mexico. Yes, Mr. René, and this is very important, not only um, the history to be taught in the educational institutions, but across our country because one thing for a fact is that the Belizean people they're blessed and I think that our forefathers our heroes sacrificed their lives just as any other people who has survived one of the longest war and that's why we have an independent nation but independence comes to Belize not only on the 21st of September 1981. Yeah. It doesn't come on uh, just the heads of agreement. It doesn't come the paving of our independence. It comes more. Way back. Way back. Yeah. The first cry, one of the, one of the early cries was that of Marcos Canul. Marcos Canul, mm -hmm. the great Ikai Chemaya. And um, I welcome you to, to, the, to the small museum. Okay, this. Let's, let's this small museum comes as an emblematic mm. project. Mm. One, it was the vision of my mom mm -hmm. and my dad. Two, we won the, the emblematic award from Mundo Maya. Okay. And they gave us all the furniture for, well, this, the for the museum. But we had to put the building okay. and do the, the finishing. But be my guest. Thank you. Let's go into the museum. See this here is the... I want to... To acknowledge my dad, like I mentioned, yeah. because he, every time we go, we visit other elders, they sit and they, and they start to tell us about the different um, experiences from their great grandfathers. Mm -hmm. That's one. Two, and I must acknowledge different um, organizations, NGOs that have collaborated with us. Mm -hmm. And one of them is the Mundo Maya Internacional and headquarters in Guatemala. Like, um, they gave us the, after presenting our, our proposal, 
um, this museum comes as a result of the genesis from Festival del Pueblo. Mm -hmm. Every year we do a Festival del Pueblo. Mm -hmm. Why Festival del Pueblo? I want to ask you uh, about that. What came along with that? Okay. Festival uh, del Pueblo. And where is it held? Right here. Okay. Right here in our home also. Okay. So you organize it. We organize it and we invite different um, cultural groups, different guest speakers, um, different um, educational institutions, and researchers, and, and not only Belizeans, but also from the Mundo Maya countries. And why festival? Because festival allow us to showcase not only um, Maya culture per se, but it allows us to showcase their culture, their beliefs. So it's not only beliefs. One, two, del pueblo is not pueblo de San Lazaro, but Pueblo means we as people. So it's a festival of the people. And because of that, we have gained so many um, support and willingness to work with different organizations across with other museums. And we have been invited, for example, annually to go to the anniversary of the Guerra de Castas. Um, presently, we um, there is one in Carrillo Puerto. We are always we are working with them, but this could be like a personal uh, experience to visit those places. But like my dad says, we need to share this information. So what we are doing, this Festival of the Pueblo has given us this museum, and now this museum is creating this cultural bridge between Mexico, Belize, and other Mundo Mayan countries. And Felipe Carrillo Puerto, um, where, you, where, you, where you go to, was once the Chan Santa Cruz, which was the main city um, during the Guerra de Castas, Guerra de the Chan Castas. Santa Cruz. The Cruzob, the Cruzob uh, Maya. Uh, that's where and the. So the Felipe Carrillo Puerto. Felipe Carrillo Puerto was the governor. He was the governor at the time, so it was named uh, after him. After him. When, when Quintana Roo became a state of Mexico after the war was finished. Yes, and I think that. Yes, um, Adriel also, um, I said, you know, part that we need to visit. Uh, Adriel, you, you, you visit? Yeah, you visited? Yeah, it was back in 2018. 18. Yes, we went. Um, he took me up to ground zero, like he says, in, in Teosuko, where all the, the, the uh, war happened in 1847. And it's um it's pretty amazing getting to know the, the the grounds and actually seeing the tunnels that the museum has in Tihosuko where they all stored their food within the war uh -huh. in eighteen forty seven. So it's a uh, very um adventurous and pretty amazing um um history yeah. that I got to know. Yeah. And it's how common are it to be the sea, right? One 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 thing I would like to share is because uh, uh, he said like Pedro Carrillo. So when we go to Carrillo Puerto, they're asking if we are descendants of from, from the great uh, Carrillo. But you know, Carrillo is a big family. Yeah, it's a big family. It's a big family. Yeah, we can have a Julia Carrillo working with me right now too. So, and she might be from the same area here. And this is the um, exhibit of the Guerra de Castas. Okay. And Mr. Rene, be I my guess guest. We will expand a little on the war when we're in here. Okay. At your museum, and. Uh, I guess I'm in your hands now. You will have to walk me around. I couldn't help but notice on the wall, though, and I'm eager to, when we get to it, that you actually have the dates of the caste war recorded and some of the incidents, uh, major incidents of the caste war that we've been talking about outside actually reflected here in your museum. So, I am in your hands now. Uh, Mr. Rene, and to all your viewers, um, there is one thing that we can see when a family is together, it stays together, and we have to work. And I think this will be the foundation. This is the foundation of every country that Belize wants. So here, let me introduce to you, this is my mom. Okay. <laughs> yes, she passed away last year in May. And she had the vision to create this museum. She collaborated her stories has been written down and recorded. She 
is the sister of Juliana. When we were with the tamales, yes. I, saw, I saw the resemblance. Yes. Yeah. And she believed, and I will quote, La tierra se hizo para trabajar. The land was made to work. Toil, we have to toil oh, the land. Toil the land, yes, work. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that she believed, that we need to, to, to take care of the land. And our unsung heroes took care of this land. Many people, we owe them merits for taking care of this land. And that's why I can see that I'm very proud of her. And this museum is in the beginning stage. As we speak, we have laid out what were the plans. And in the future, hopefully this year, we have this museum with another extension completed. Very good, very good. And so we salute your mom and uh, may she rest in peace. Thanks. And gracias. Dios botic, señor, le la en Watan. Le u mama le la, hijo le la, le u mama. You're talking about mother and son and the connection between between you both and how proud he is of the connection, right? Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't understand fully, but I, I, I captured, I thought he was talking. Mi mama, he says, this is my mom, yeah. I am his son. Yeah. And, um, that's, and I, I, that's why they tell him, um, every person has a legacy. Yeah. And I think that we need to inculcate our future generations. Mm -hmm. It's not only history, it, but we, there is a vast things that we can do for our country. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we believe we, we have to do it. And this is the time. Mm -hmm. This is the time. We will not invent an invasion. Our government or governments will not come down to anarchy. Mm -hmm. We are the people and we have the voice and we have the strength. Amen. Yeah. We will have more from the Yuchan Mul Yashkash Maya Museum in San Lazaro Village after this break. The National Gas Company Belize Limited project became a reality because Belizeans believed in the project and invested in its development, construction, and implementation. Equity financing for the project featured investments from local enterprises as well as one foreign investor. The public-private partnership structure of the project facilitated government's ownership of a 25% stake at no cost to the taxpayers. Debt financing for the project featured the successful launch of Belize's first ever project bonds, some $30 million financed by a cross-section of institutional investors. Investments came from credit unions, notably St. Francis Xavier Credit Union and Holy Redeemer Credit Union, insurance companies, pension funds, and commercial banks. In addition, the project managed to successfully secure some $12 million in debt financing from the IDB Invest. The IDB's participation in this debt financing is a testament to their belief in the environmental, social, and governance principles taken on by the developers of this project. This project is a testament to the growth and development of Belize's financial system. It shows confidence of Belizean investors to put their money behind homegrown and developed projects that contribute to our national development. I am proud of this project and I'm hopeful that there are many more like it to come. The National Gas Company of Belize, fueling Belize forward. We are the Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, or York, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. The Barry, get more, be less. Since 2008, 
the Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust has created opportunities for Belizeans to develop themselves and their communities. The Trust employs tools that are intuitive, collaborative, and accessible so that every Belizean is empowered to achieve their full potential. Over 200,000 Belizeans have been impacted because of our various initiatives. The Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, empowering Belizeans of today to create the Belize of tomorrow. Shell V Power, with three times more cleaning and friction reducing molecules. Go well, go Shell. Traditional um, dress, right? Uh, when yes. This is the traditional Maya dress. This is called the ipil. This ipil is the attire for the daily use of the woman. This one here. We put this. Even though we have, on, uh, we have others, uh, the different, what we call the terno, the more elegant ones. Mm -hmm. But I think that this reflects and this symbolizes a lot in our Maya culture. Mm -hmm. The pill. And um, here we have other pieces, what we call the, stone, the grinding stone, the metate and la mano. Mm -hmm. And this was found here in the community of San Lazaro. And this was donated by Mr. Remigio Sanchez. And I acknowledge Mr. Sanchez for donating yeah, this. Yeah, that stone is heavy. It's heavy. Yeah. I, 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 I'm familiar with it. Yes. Yeah. It's good to. So you imagine <laughs> the Maya women, they were yeah. very this strong. Is a heavy stone. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, okay. So we have this. And then here we have. Uh, the table, mm -hmm. Mayan table, and this is what we call the lek. The lek, yeah, the water is the lek. The yeah. lek, it, it will keep your tortillas, tortillas warm. warm. Okay, yeah. see? And it's made from calabash, right? Right. A big calabash, you scrape it out, and, uh, and the tortillas will never get cold in this thing. Never, never, never. Right? The lek. No. When you used to go and cut, when you used to cut wood, or when you used to go and cut, you used to lick, right? To lick, yes, because there is no cold, it is always at your time so that you can eat it. You see, when you used to go and work, he takes his lick with him, and right? And then, with this. And that, this is the water, the, mm -hmm. this is the, how do you call this? Chu. 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 Chu, we call it in Maya. Tuk tuk, in Spanish. The chew on the lake. This, and I am grateful for this because there is something that I want to share. Mm -hmm. and, and I really treasure this lake because when I visited Ground Zero, where the war uh, started in Teosuko, mm -hmm. I was we were visiting the elders, the families, and as I walk in the kitchen, I saw it. And um, but I know that I have to be conscious and respect mm -hmm. my, my people who are hosting. And I had mentioned to them, como cuanto cuesta uno? And the lady told me, esto okay, es okay. mío. Mm -hmm. Este es mi patrimonio. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of it. And then, I and then she told me, De adonde vienes? Where do you, I come from? I say, Belize, once a British colony, Honduras Britannica, British Honduras. And she just looked at me. She watched me. Before she said anything, I took out my wallet and I took out a $5 note. Mm -hmm. And she looked at it. Esa. The reina. Queen. 
ser. Llévalo. Take it. And she told me what her grandfather went through in Ground Zero. Well, give me a quick insight into what that, that story would have been. You could do that for me in a few minutes. She said that her grandfather from Teosuko, and when they heard that this war is, is mm -hmm. speak, mm -hmm. she said, what we will do? And her grandfather said, vamos a pelear. We will fight. We will fight. And her grandfather was, um, at that time, he met and fought with Jacinto Pat. Jacinto Pat was one of the Batabs mm. that was fighting for the liberation of the Maya people mm. in Teosuko. Okay. That testimony, I have it here. And I have traveled the state of Quintana Roo, Yucatan, even Campeche. And I have seen the remains of bullets, the, of the, um, the canyons, the balls. Mm -hmm. Cannon balls, balls. I've seen them. Mm -hmm. They say, this is what happened. But here we are, and we are proud to be Mayas. Mm -hmm. Then you have, going back to our exhibition, you have the cacao, we have the cacao. and the mice. The cacao, is, you know right now many people are using for chocolate, but chocolate. this retreat. The Mayas use it for tree. Uh -huh. the, 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 the seeds were worth money, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Here, and then we have the, the corn. corn. And here, mice. It's beans. Dígale cómo se llama esta clase de frijol. ¿Cómo se llama? Nosotros le decimos cariba. 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 ¿Por qué? Le dijimos cariba porque desde que lo pelas tiene dos caras. When you peel these beans, no, it has two faces. What? It's a bean with two faces? The thing is this, see? This little bean here grows but in vines. This yeah. is the real kabash bull, what you call it. Uh -huh. So there's one, but I don't see the other face. No, not, este no tiene. I don't think this one has no, it. No, no. no. Es que se, se oh, they get dry? Se se yeah, because. Oh, it was fixed. Yo. No, está bien sazón y le sale dos caritas. You have to pick it at the right time to see the two faces. So this one grows in a vine. Mm -hmm. It's not the traditional deal that we see. No, this grows in the vines. Mm -hmm. You just put it on the, the trunk of a tree and it goes. This one okay. here. Okay. Um, well, uh, going, going more to, this is the traditional table. Yeah, very low. Very mm -hmm. low. Mm -hmm. And it has three, um, the, the, the three feet, and this translates. If we go to the in the in the Mayan culture, it has the Mayas use three stones. Mm -hmm. This one has three feet, and then afterwards we have this, where you put uh, like a rock to put your um, your ingredients, and it's being sustained by three oh, okay. three, yeah, strings. three strings. Uh -huh. So three stones, the three feet, and the three strings are nine, which is the nine months of the, 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 the mother, the maternity. Um, nine months of maternity? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so the, the pregnancy of the woman, nine months, mm -hmm. right? Um, here, uh, let me show you, this is the... Mi papá, mi papá me dijo, nunca tengas vergüenza, hijo. Muéstrale a tu gente, a tus amigos beliceños, esta es comida de los mayas. Locales, como nosotros. My father said to sh don't never be ashamed, show people the food of the Maya, the, or so our food. Sí, porque este se come con muchas cosas. With a lot of things. Con tu habanero, mm -hmm. tu carne de coche, le penas adentro, tu habanero, uh, rico. Uh -huh. Para cocinarlo está facilito. Mi difunta esposa me dice, cocínalo, apriéndelo, porque cuando yo me vaya de acá, ya lo sabes cocinarlo. Yo lo puedo cocinar. His wife told him, learn to cook this, because when I leave, you have to know how to cook it. And he says he can cook it. <laughs> okay. No tengas vergüenza, ser 
un mexicano. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed to be who you are. You're a, you're a Mexican, but you're a Belizean. Bueno, ellos decían mexicano porque venimos, mis padres vienen de allá. Sí, sí. Por, por la guerra, pero usted nació aquí. Okay. Soy nacido acá. You were, born, you, were born, you were born in Belize, even though your parents came from, from over there. Uh, right. Let me introduce to you uh, this, uh, some of the nations from the community. Mm -hmm. And these pieces of pottery. pottery were found here where we are standing at the moment. On the same site. On the same site. You know, as I came in, I looked at the site and I said, hmm. There's a Mayan temple under the site, right? And I, I, I you think I'm right, or? You are right, and this proves that we had Maya people living here. Yeah, exactly where we are. And this gives value added to our museum. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, this is for future generations and to say my land, my country. Mm -hmm. I notice there are pieces of flint as well. And yes, uh, uh, call the, uh, people call them achitas. Uh, achitas, yeah. All right, achitas. Mm -hmm. This was found in a cane field. Wow. And this was donated to us by a young lady on, on the second festival del pueblo. Mm -hmm. It was in 2013. Wow. So we are very um, thankful to all these people who have donated these items. And this is just uh, not even quarter of what we have to showcase. And here is the Maya resistant movements. Uh -huh. Yes, this is interesting. This is the Maya resistant movements and majority of them, um, even though it occurred in the Mexican um, part of the country, but many of them are consequences of this caste war and that's how we came about. For example, uh, the rebellion of the Maya, of Campeche, um, of the Cash. We have people in Belize who still who have family in the Cash. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, and then we have. Bacalum. Yes. So this is the. Well, let, let me let me just say, read this for those who are listening on radio. 1546 Maya rebellions of Shishin Shell, Sotuta, Tases. Am I correct? Yeah. Kupul, Kokwa, and Waimil. Waimil. 1560-1562 movement of Sotuta and Mani. Am I correct so far, the pronunciations? 1565, conspiracy of Valladolid. What was the conspiracy of Valladolid? Okay. Here in Valladolid, it was... This is Yucatan. That's Yucatan. It's a few, a few miles from, 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 from Merida. Now, no, if you see this, all of this here is a, is a conspiracy. Yeah, because you had the uh, rebellion of the Maya of Campeche, 1580 to 1583, 1585, conspiracy of Campeche, and 1597, conspiracy of Sotuta. So all of these uh, people start to conspire. Yeah, and that's how it, 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 it was shaping and, and, and everything. For example, you know that you will, when we go more depth in history, sometimes you will see that this Mayan leader was killed by his secretary. Yeah. Or uh, things came as a, as a trap sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's just like what happened here in Belize um, with the Ikaiche, Marcos Canul, yeah. and even with uh, Maximo Perez. Yeah. So th these are the little main points that happened. But if we are aware, we are talking about 1546. That's when it started, yeah. That's when the Spaniards came in. Yeah. And I think that we cannot ignore the impact also that Spain did, and not only singing uh, or, or, or say, you know, we were colonized only by the British. No, no. Spain, Spain yeah. had a, it played an important, uh, it, well, not an important, but it played a, a role in colonialism. and. If we are descendants of the Maya, we're descendants of the Spanish, we're descendants of the British, we were divided. Well, yeah. mm -hmm. That is so. And 1610 mo movement of Tekash, rebellion of Sakalum, rebellion of the Maya Bacalar, rebellion of Jacinto Canex. So by up to 1761, you have these all these rebellions these and uprisings and, 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 and what have you. Came out. And then what happened here? This is the caste system. The caste system, and that's why it's called the caste war. Caste war. Right, the war of classes. 
with many, our system. Yes, many people say here, you know, I am Masewal, but who is a Masewal? Masewal is the Maya who work Milpa, but also labor on an hacienda. But then afterwards we have the mestizo, people have a mixed Spanish and Maya heritage. Why, why don't we start from the bottom? Because they had, they had the Mayans, the, the pure Mayan at the bottom, right? Yeah. Maya leading uh, a tradition of life apart from the caste system was a wheat. wheat. So he, he was not a part or she was not a part was of the system. He lives his life. Lives his life. He keeps far. Mm -hmm. That was the wheat. Then we had the, the Masewal. Masewal. Masewal is a Maya who worked in Milpa, but may also labor on an hacienda. hacienda. So that was a laborer. The laborer. Uh -huh. But remember that the haciendas, it was controlled by the Spanish. By the Spanish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spanish controlled the hacienda. So this is, this is a worker. Yes. Then the peon. The peon was a Maya worker on an hacienda, ranch, or farm. So the peon was also a, a, another class of worker. Another class of worker thinking that he was better than I the th well. right. That's how they divide you, right? That's how they divide so you. So you are better than this one, and right? And, and, and everybody goes up on this. I like how you have it depicted here, because everybody goes up on the ladder. Yes. So they then going another step up, mm -hmm. we Hidalgo. meet the Hidalgo. The descendants of the pre-Hispanic Maya nobility. You know? And you, we have, we have it, people and I can tell you, people believe that they're Hidalgos, you know. And I have met some people, not only in Mexico, but even here. And they say, yes, I am, like, my complexion of my skin. But I am, I have Maya nobility. No. Yes. And so from the Hidalgo now, we go up to the Mestizo. The Mestizo now is this people having mixed Spanish Maya heritage. Yes. The only thing that here that I see when they say mix, because being mixed, right now, if we say I am mestizo, hey, I don't know in which generation there was a mix, not only with Spanish and Maya, but maybe we have some blood of the British, maybe we have some blood of Garifuna, we have some blood of the Creole. So, um, but here the term in this, Mestizo, it was the Spanish and Maya. Spanish and Maya, because you're talking about Mexico now. Yes. Right? And um, the top, the, bra uh, the latter was a white man. Yes. Blanco. Blanco. Spaniards and their descendants who held political and economic power. So the Blanco was at the top of the ladder. He was the one that um, controlled everybody. Mm. And so the Guerra de Castas became these here from the Hidalgo, the Peon, the Mastejual, the Wheat, rebelling against the Mestizo and the Spaniards. Am I right in that? And here, many people summarize it as the Mastejual fighting the Spaniards. Yeah. <laughs> but again, I go, uh, we have to be very so careful. Right? Yes. I'm not sure how, 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 yes. how involved they were. But then afterwards, I'm, this is the system, right? But was it a, was it a really a caste war? That's the That's question. That's the caste system. That's the caste system, but was it a, I, and I think. What would you term it? Um, that's why they call it the Maya social war. Caste war, uh, guerra de castas. What are the teachers guerra de castas? That's when the different historians, the researchers came and put that title as Guerra de Castas. Cast war. Cast war. Because of the caste system. Yeah. But I think it was more of a social war. Because the disfranchised, the disfranchised were these. So it was like the disfranchised here, yeah, going up against the top, the top, the top bucket up here. No, sorry, sorry, the, 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 the disfranchised going up uh, from here. Uh, sorry, the, the, the franchise from the Hidalgo down to the wheat going up against the Mestizo and the Blanco. Right? And, and if you were Mestizo or Blanco, you gotta go. You gotta go, yes. And this is exactly what, what uh, Manuel Antonio I, Cecilio Chi, and uh -huh. Jacinto Pat, these are the three main um, batabs, what you call it, 
that led this this started in um, 1847. So you have Manuel Antonio I, Cecilio Chi, and Jacinto Pat, and. Could I, could I read this uh, sure, just just, sure, sure. Uh, just 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 to, for for for. Manuel Antonio I, 1817 to 1847, was a Yucatec Maya military leader and revolutionary and chief of the village of Chichimilia. In 1847, he met with Cecilio Chi, Jacinto Pat, and Bonifacio Novello to plan the uprising that would become the caste war. Reportedly, he stated that his goal was to have the white men driven from the peninsula. He was discovered when a bartender found a suspicious letter he had left in his hut and was arrested and soon afterwards executed on July 26th of the same year. That was after the war, right? When he was executed? He was executed in 1847. Mm -hmm. That's when he died um, on, on July. On July. 26th, uh -huh. But then afterwards, the, 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 the war, this is the, the initial stages. Oh, the war started after that, right? On that same year, 1847. That's when the war started. Yes. Uh -huh. So the war started when he was killed. Yes. 1817 to 1847. And he was taken on the plaza, and then the authorities had said that any Indian that follows his steps will end up just like he did. He was literally slaughtered and left on the plaza under the sun had to die. Wow. And so that led to people saying, hey, out with you, Mestizo and Blanco. This because the mestizos are mixture of the blanco, so you have sangre blanca, you gotta go. You gotta go, and this is where um, I took my my dad and my mom to to we went to Tepich, and this is many people. people uh, I, I sometimes I like to make some comparisons, you know. I had a bad one, so who is the baddest? But then when I meet people, especially the elders in Tepich, um, they will tell you uh, with that. With that, um, that lewd mm -hmm. trying to, to share this history and not to give wrong information and why. Mm -hmm. Because here, um, you can go ahead if you want to go ahead. This, read is, who this, this is Cecilia Chi. Yes. Chi's ancestor, Andres Chi, was involved in the 1597 rebellion against the Spanish. But up of Tepich, by 1840, Cecilio was respected for his intelligence, eloquence, and leadership qualities, though he was not well educated. Like I, which is Miguel, uh, Manuel Antonio, like I, he gained military experience fighting in the Yucatecan conflicts. He joined the Maya conspiracy in 1847 and with Jacinto Pat led an assault on Tepich that killed all members of the 20 non Maya families in the town. This became the first recognized incident of the caste war. She was committed to the expulsion and extermination of foreigners from the Yucatan Peninsula. This position brought him into conflict with Jacinto Pat, who sought an end to hostilities with the Yucatecos as a way to achieve Maya autonomy. She was assassinated by his secretary, Anastasio Flores, in June of 1849. We spoke about him a bit earlier. No? Yes, and like I said, he, um, led an assault on the pitch that killed all members of 20 known Maya families in the town. Yeah, that would have been a mestizo and blancos, right? Yes. So I... And Batab, Batab was, a t was a tribe, right? Yes, Batab oh. was uh, like a, a given like commandante or, um, you know, they, they, that's what they... Well, they Batab is a title. Yes, a title. Uh -huh. A okay. title that they use it. it so it's like commander. Yes. When you when you say a batab, yeah, you're, you're, you're a commander. Yeah. So batab of Tihosuko. Mm -hmm. Pat. This is um, Jacinto Pat. A Pat inherited the leadership role from his father, Don Francisco Pat, who is recorded as batab in 1827. Well read and politically savvy, Jacinto initially maintained his position and influence in the prosperous community of Tihosuko or Tihosuko, mm -hmm. Tihosuko by getting along with the ruling Yucatecos. As the crisis escalated in 1847, his hacienda at Skulmopich, Sul, no, uh, Skul, Sul, Skulmopich, his hacienda at Sulumpich, a few kilometers outside of Tibosuko, Tibosuko became the gathering point for the leaders of the rebellion. Pat joined Chi in leading the attack against the foreigners of Tepich, but in April 1848, Pat signed a treaty with the Yucatecan government at Sukabab, Tukakab, Sukakab, hoping to end the conflict. 
Chi committed to a more radical agenda, rejected the treaty. That is Pat trying to reach a treaty with yeah. Chi. Soon after Chi's death, this Chi here, in June of the following year, Pat tried to reach out to the authorities in British Honduras, Belize, in a further effort to cool things down, but was accused of treason by the new leaders, Florentino Chan and Venancio Peck. In September 1849, Peck assassinated Jacinto Pat. There we go. There we go. There we go. So you can see how the war was and how it was. That, that's, that's the shocking wave, those wires. I mean, th these people had, they were knowledgeable. They had that, they were skillful fighters besides negotiators, but they were, it's either Maya, Maya or nothing. Or nothing. Yeah. And then I had the opportunity to visit his hacienda, still standing in Teosuco. In our second segment, we will continue our tour of the museum, as well as Don Pedro will show us how to make rope from a plant. Be sure to tune in. Belize Watch, knowledge of the past, impacting the present, building the future. Celebration time. It don't matter what part of the jewelry come from. You that you 